Bitcoin update for the weekend. We're going to look at levels to watch on a couple different time frames. We'll start off on the four hour. We'll zoom out to the daily charts, maybe the three day, uh, then the weekly. We'll look at key targets and what's going on, you know, for the short term and the long term. So if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Follow us on our private Telegram if you want more help navigating the markets. I'm there every day doing more content if you're wondering where I'm at. So uh, links below. Let's get right to it. Four hour chart. What the hell is this line out here? That's our weekly close. So Sunday evening on the Eastern Seaboard, it's 8 p.m., right? That's where we're at. There's our weekly close. So on the four-hour chart here, so far, so good uh, for the bulls anyway. Uh, we're looking at uh, kind of a stair step. So here's our low right back in here, and then our move up, and then consolidation. Anytime you have a nice move, you're more than likely just going to hesitate after, you know, you show some um, you know, lack of volatility or reach those upper Bollinger bands. So, uh, sideways move and then your new highs hit and then likely you're getting ready to go again, right? Look how tight the Bollinger bands got here. Um, and then your price action in the upper, you know, part of, you know, your Bollinger bands and that leads you to the odds of the next move up. So here we are again, now sideways, um, look at the current candle. Uh, we close this in just under an hour, depending on when you watch this, maybe you can see what we're going to do here. Um, so we're looking at consolidation until, you know, maybe proven otherwise. And we're looking like we're trying to do it right now, although there are fake outs, right? So be, be cautious. Um, I would say what we want to watch for for the next several days into that weekend close out here that I just erased. Uh, we're looking at uh, you want to maintain a high above here or a low, I should say, a lowest close, right? If we close under here, you know, 29,850 area then that improves your odds of us going back down and maybe doing some, you know, uh, uh, a breather, so to speak. But that's not the odds for now. I mean, look at all the moving averages curling up. Uh, your 100 just crossed the 200. That's bullish. Um, a hell of a move over the past, um, you know, week or so, right? Um, so are we getting ready to do another one? Well, not so fast on the Bollinger Bands, right? Even though that would take us to new local highs, 31.5, uh, that upper band. What we'd likely want to want to see out of the bulls, uh, the bulls would want to see, the bears uh, would be crying, uh, see this, this lower Bollinger Band would likely do something like this, right? If we want the next move to go higher, right, you're going to want to look for this kind of setup structure. Now, we could just go up here, you know, over the next handful of hours and then come back and do something like this and be just right back in our zone. Or, um, you know, through the weekend, we could just kind of grind up along this EMA 8, this red line here, and we did something like this, and then the Bollinger Bands start to do, you know, something like this, then guess what? Uh, something like this could mirror something like that in our next phase uh, to the upside, two fresh new local highs of 2023, and, you know, the, the sky's the limit, where we'll, we'll give some targets at the, uh, the bigger uh, time frames, like the weekly chart here. Um, but so for the Bulls, this is what you'd want to see. Um, you know, even a close above here on the four hour is starting to increase the odds of further upside. So our highest close is right here at 30,300, call it. Um, so we're above that now. Where will we close in, you know, 48 minutes? Go check. Um, and then we'll see, right? Those are your odds. All it's all you have in crypto or any kind of trading is the odds. You want to try to stack the odds in your favor. Um, so again, the downside closing below that EMA eight, that would be a warning closing below this low here, right here at 29.5 that would be another warning of going down lower um however breaking breaking this high is increasing that and then watch for the bollinger band structure as well um so i'll also and note your hike and candles right these show you your bullish momentum we have a lot of bullish momentum very little bearish momentum and remember these are opposite of your traditional japanese candlesticks that most of you are used to this guy right here right? Uh, wicks show the momentum uh, and the big green candles are, you know, what is it bullish or bearish, right? So pretty easy. Um, almost, almost no fight out of the bears. Indecision candle right here. Uh, bulls pretty equal, right? Bulls and bears both fighting, likely people taking profits that got in down here, just, you know, being safe. And then, um, you know, we're kind of forming this kind of a pennant here on the four hour um, or just sideways consolidation for the next stair step. So I would say, uh, you know, most of the time consolidation, you know, breeds the previous direction, right? Just hesitation before the next move. So I would give slight edge to the bulls uh, based on this chart, based on the Heiken Ashi candle momentum, right? You got to based on the indicators, based on uh, your moving averages, 
this leans bullish for sure. Right, so that's where we're looking at for the four hour. Now let's zoom out to the daily, get a little bit better picture. The daily chart yesterday printed a textbook indecision candle, right? Long leg doji. Um, and now we're seeing some follow through by the bulls. Um, we would want to see just any close above here. Um, and we could continue, even though we're outside the Bollinger Bands and prices are high by definition. I mean, let's let's go back and look at some of the early bullish moves here. Right, early 2023. Um, outside, 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 outside. <laughs> right, you can keep going. Right, it, it's just because prices are high, uh, and also we could be at some kind of move like this here. Right, uh, big move up, consolidation, another big move up before the longer consolidation. So, um, this could be that. Right, we could move up to 32, 33, mid 30s before the longer consolidation. Right, so that's the daily chart. Bollinger Bands still wide open mouth. Uh, look at your moving averages. I mean, getting sorted out least to greatest. That's a good sign. Uh, showing separation from the price to your EMA 8, right? As long as you're above the EMA 8, you got to be leaning mega bull, right? On any chart you're looking at, it's bullish if you're above the highest um, uh, of, uh, or I should say the lowest moving average, the lowest. Uh, so they're 8, 14, 21, 50, 34, uh, and reverse the 100. You catch my draft, right? Um, let's look at the indicators, right? Um, looking good, you know, slightly getting oversold here, but that can take days, if not weeks to play out on a daily chart, right? We could go much higher on the RSI, right? And your RSI high is what you want, your relative strength. This is, you can think of it like, uh, you know, the, the guys in the gym, right? Who do you want uh, working for you? The low strength or the high strength, right? Those are those are the, the bullish moves. And just because the RSI is, you know, cranked out here, that just means it's super strong, right? You want you want to watch for all three of these in working with each other. So we're a, getting a little bit frothy on this time frame, but it can go higher. Like we could go to 32, 33 before this really you know shows that it's exhausted in the in in a, in a bigger scale, right? So looking good so far on the daily, 30,400 as of right now, and. Uh, seems to be trending up, right? Let's go check uh, the five-day Gaussian channel real quick. Let's should just do a checkup, right? Let's uh, see how that's working out. Uh, channel turns green, price action above. You're you're buying any 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 anywhere in here, right? For the years ahead, not for the days ahead, the the six minutes ahead, right? When the Gaussian channel goes from red to green after prolonged bear market, that's your sign. Right. And we've talked about this many times. We wick down right to the really closed right on the top of the five day Gaussian, wicked a little bit lower right to the Bollinger Band. Look how tight the Bollinger Bands are on the five day uh, top line curling up. Um, right. For the years ahead, this is still this is still good. Good zones. Right. Good. Good buy zones for, you know, the next several years. If you're going to be around that long, hopefully most of you are. Uh, now at 30,500 and moving up. Okay, so how about the weekly chart? Have we turned green there yet? No, but I, I would venture a guess that we're a couple weeks away from doing that. Not a not as big a deal. I, I'm a, I'm a, that's why we use the five day. It's a little bit faster than the weekly and it has the least amount of fake outs um, historically, right? right? So um, nice move up, consolidation, nice move up, consolidation into kind of this falling wedge pattern and now uh, the play out of that. So this is like candle one after the downtrend is broken okay so we're working on our highest weekly candle close uh since the you know the bear market right so uh right here close 30,300 we're looking pretty good for doing that right uh as of right now there's at least a chance so two days nine hours we close this weekly candle we're looking for a close above that and then that also improves our odds of further continuation upside, especially if you get a candle close like this uh, with very little wick on top or zero wick on top, that would be called a shaven head. And that's a very bullish candle because that means buyers are buying right into the close. Much more likely to continue up if you get something like that, like where we are right now, see that little wick, almost nothing. Um, imagine, right, it's shaven head. Why is it called that, right? No hair on top. Right. Okay. So that's the weekly. That's the best case scenario. And um, I mean, hello. What about these indicators, Chase? I mean, bullish all around. Let's just start at the top and go down. Right. We talked about this at pretty much every Bitcoin video. Your weekly RSI now at the bottom effect um, of the bull markets. You go back in history on Bitcoin, holding that low 50 level historically is 
bull separates bull and bear markets now loosely fit here right you, i'd rather i usually draw a zone so we can do that because uh my ocd is kicking in i don't like it <laughs> uh so looking at this zone right you can separate bull and bear markets uh easily and it's not just for you know the past bull market or bear market it's for the past infinity bull mar and bear markets of bitcoin you can stretch this all the way back i mean look at this Remember, we're going back to 2016 2015 the weekly rsi will hold this structure when it's a bull market, we were very close last couple of weeks to breaking it. And what did we do? A macro bounce, huge bounce back to the upside. Bull market is here. We had a chance to you know, prove everybody wrong and go back to bearish. Not so fast. And after one, two, three taps, three strikes, what do you think? Uh, good to go on bull market territory. Anybody still arguing for bears? Uh, just wave at them from the sky, right? Wave down. We're not, we're not going to see them for a whole lot longer. All right, so uh, stochastic RSI, your momentum, just starting to turn bullish. Are you nuts, right? I mean, look at these moves. If we get, if this starts again, if this goes up again, I mean, I don't know where the price could end up being, right? Um, don't want to create FOMO. Do not FOMO in uh, at buying off of large green candles. But if you don't have any position and you're still sidelined, what are you doing, right? You've missed uh, over a 2x move from the bottoms, right? You have to get something, right? If you didn't buy anything uh, between, you know, 30k to 25k, you're doing it wrong, right? You're, you're just, you held support on the 200 week moving average. You held support above your macro breakout structure, right? This is where you buy, right? At least a little bit, right? So um, look at your ADX in the eye. On the, these are weekly scales here, folks, right? Uh, ADX curling up right? Following the bears, the bulls, just kidding. Uh, green, right? Uh, it's color coded for, for the, for the idiots. Uh, green is bulls, right? Red is bears. Hello. Um, we, we, divergence, right? We're separating. Excellent sign. You want your ADX above 25 to show strength. Are we above 25? Check mark, check mark. Bulls in charge above 25 on the weekly scale, Right, bears haven't been in charge since back here, right? January, 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 January. That's when it switched on the macro scale. January. When was it? January. All right, uh, ADX and DI. Good, good, good looking out. Now, one of the biggest one and one of my favorites, uh, the Fisher Transform on the weekly scale has triggered a buy signal. Uh, that is not to be taken lightly, right? Uh, weekly usually. Um, Pretty, pretty big time, right? That's a weekly, a lot of math involved in this indicator. So when that, when that uh, speaks, right? And when was the last time? I mean, we triggered down bear back in April, right? What was the price doing in April? That was the top. We just triggered a, a buy, the opposite, right? So that means what? If that means the top was in, this means the bottom was in, right? So there you go, right? I like can't right, like talk any higher than this, right? <laughs> um, uh, that's it. That's what I wanted to cover for the indicators, right? Good stuff going on. We're now at 30700 We've moved up several hundred dollars since we started making this video, right? I don't know where the top is. Neither does your best friend. Uh, so don't listen. Watch the charts. They'll tell you, right? They'll tell you when you're in trouble, when you're on trouble. I mean, look at the moving averages here, right? Just moving averages look like they're coiled up and ready to kaboom, right? I mean, just look at them. Look at them, right? I mean, you can't... I'm trying to illustrate all the positives here. Um, I've, I'm looking at bears too, but I mean, there's not a whole lot left to go on, right? It was here and we said, hell no. And we bounced right off of the 200 week and I, it, the bears are dead now, right? If there's any bears still left, um, good luck to them. How's that? Anybody check on capo? Um, all right. Uh, let's get to our quote of the day to find out what one is fitted to do and to secure an opportunity to do it is the key to happiness. Agreed. Car of the day. The Bentley Continental GT convertible is the way to go for quarter million dollar car. <laughs> All right, that is that'll wrap it up for the weekend. If you have any questions, want to see something else, want me to cover anything else, uh, what are your thoughts? Are we going higher? Are we going lower? Uh, where would the where's the top going to be for this year? Or is it already in? Let me know. What do you want to see next? Right, all coins. Oh, that's one thing. If you're still here, bonus. Um, Fear greed index, we're at 65 in greed. Doesn't mean you can't go higher. I mean, let's look at the chart. Going back a year, right? Nice little spike up. That's that's pretty good after falling down, falling down, falling down for months here. Um, 
that's a good sign again for the Bulls, even though greed can last for a long time. Uh, and it's been a long time since we've been in greed, right? So um, that, I would argue, is still a good thing. Uh, Gordon Gecko at this point, greed is good. Um, uh, the words. Um, altcoin season index, right? Use this. If you haven't used it already, blockchaincenter.net, it's free, right? Just keep it up on your tabs. Uh, it's still Bitcoin season and pretty much peak Bitcoin season, still 10, right? That means altcoins are not outperforming Bitcoin. You can scroll down and look at it. Some of the ones that are right here, uh, most that aren't, right? And then you can get your definitions of what the hell is it if you want, right? Right here. If 75, I know you can't see it all. You go read it, right? Uh, but this is the easy tracker, right? Altcoins are not going to be, you know, start moving big time until you're at least above 25. This is peak Bitcoin season. You don't want to be holding all altcoins down in Bitcoin season, just like you don't want to be holding all Bitcoin in altcoin season. Does that make sense? Right? So if you're doing that, you're you're getting your seasons mixed up. You're putting on your Santa hat in July and you're lighting fireworks in December. Stop doing that, right? Yeah, people look at you odd. Uh, so that's not the way to do it, right? Now is the time for Santa hats. Uh, altcoin season is the time for fireworks, right? We're not near those. <laughs> Stupid analogies. All right. You can only get them here and at the end of videos usually. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great weekend. I'll see you right back here on the next one.